What's up, Insomniacs? So, I got some random things that I have installed on my Tacoma that <clears throat> really don't um, fit into like a regular video on its own because they're all super short, super quick installs that really don't take that long. Uh, so, I figured I'd kind of throw them all into the same video. You know, I'll um, have everything linked in the description and all that sort of stuff so that you know, like, hey, if, I, if you want to do this specific install, you don't have to look at the other things. You can just skip through the times. Yeah, let's hop right into it, guys. Alrighty, guys, so this install is super easy. Got the gas hole. I love it. Taco sauce only, guys. Remember, it's all you can put in here. So we got our handy dandy rusty screwdriver. We're gonna just kind of like pop this guy off. <laughs> Two-handed operation, give me a second, I'm gonna weep. So yeah, I got that little screw removed. It's got a, a capture bolt kind of thing, capture nut on the inside that's welded to this plate. Uh, so yeah, this, you don't have to worry about that coming off. Uh, see this little tab on the end? So this is actually gonna slide right in there to keep it locked in place from both sides. So yeah, and we'll get that screw, kind of slide it right back in here. You got yourself a gas hole super convenient because you don't want to be letting this thing dangle all that sort of stuff hitting up scratching up your paint you know i'm you know doing that already because off-roading you take it stick it in stick it in the gas hole and it keeps your cover or your cap covered and uh but it looks cool and i like it and it was super cheap so with that there is another tiny little upgrade for the tacoma What is up, Insomniacs? Midnight Sun 518 here back with another upgrade video for Sasha, my 2017 Tacoma TRD Pro. So today, super important upgrade. I don't know why I took this long to get it installed, especially since I've been off-roading with this guy a couple of times, but everybody needs to have themselves a fire extinguisher, or, you know, four, because uh, you never what you never know what's gonna happen. Now, this guy did come with this crappy little mount. Um, I just bought this off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. And I also got this off of Amazon. It's the Bracketeer uh, fire extinguisher brackets. We're gonna take off these two bolts, this one right here, and this one right here, get this cable out of the way. Um, and then this literally just sets right on top of those guys. So here are all the bits and bobs that come with it. Uh, we got some hardware and a couple little sticky things and an Allen wrench, and then we also have all these individual bit, bits and pieces. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have to build it out. So if you can see, these holes right here on the bracket mount are indeed threaded. So basically all that we have to do is to take this, bra this mount, rest it right up in here, and then just thread a couple of these larger screws. I already did it on this side. I just got them started and it threads right in. And then those are gonna mount right there on top of those bolts, or those, uh, yeah, bolts once we get them out. Um, and then these are gonna be the actual um, brackets that are going to be hanging off of the edge of this guy uh, so that we can mount our fire extinguisher. So this guy is going to be a 9 16 so if you can see that probably not too well with the glare but we're gonna get this guy off. Okay so I got these bolts the big ones off right here um, I got these threaded on both sides, and then I also loosely threaded uh, the support plate on here uh, for the extinguisher itself. And in fact, I'm going to have to face it the other direction. Give me a second. So I got these guys, uh, for the most part, tightened down. They're, do they're still loose, so are these ones. So this, we just kind of rest up in the, the spot that it's going to be at, and then we can set these larger bolts back in and start threading them down sorry for all the car noise there's so much traffic by my house and then i'm actually going to tighten them down first so we'll use the smaller allen key that's supplied with the kit and then we can tighten these ones down completely and then this is pretty much just going to screw in wherever that guy is tight and i'm going to slide this all the way to the left and then we're going to use the bigger of the two to tighten it down completely this just kind of clips back in place just like that. And there's the fire extinguisher mount. It's universal, but uh, I have it installed in my Tacoma. 
and there's nothing else to it. I may end up in the future grabbing a quick release mount. Obviously this is quick enough, right? But if anything, it's a little bit loose for me. Um, and I kind of want it to slide a little bit more towards the center because it's not centered on the seat and I kind of want it to be centered on the seat. But uh, the mount only has so much space that I can go. Now I can, I can move these screws around, right? So I like, I can slide this one to the left or leave it down to just one. Um, and completely move it further that way. Alrighty guys, so we are going from, so we are going from the X-Bowl traction boards, right? Which they look solid. They look very, uh, very sturdy and like they work really well, but unfortunately I don't have the right mount for it. So boom, I got me some Max Tracks, uh, actual Max Tracks, not just, um, the brand. So yeah, these uh, are actually gonna be able to fit the mount that I bought for the truck. And uh, they are so much, oh my God, they're so much heavier um, and more just dense feeling. So I think these are gonna be great. So we're gonna get them slapped on a Sasha over there. And uh, yeah, let's get this mount on. All right, so we got the mount here, right? And these holes on the outside are what the uh, actual post is gonna sit in. Um, because they are gonna line up with the max track holes just like that All right, so I got these just kind of loosely sitting up here with these kind of dangling on them and uh, Just like with the bed rack itself, right? We got the standard bolt and on the back side of that we have uh, Can't really see it too well. So the uh, bronze looking like flat washer a lock washer and then the nut all right, so now that I have the orientation that these uh, little locks have to be on here, um, I can get them tightened down onto the bracket themselves so that they're uh, more rigid. So this guy is gonna be a size 17 millimeter. Um, yeah, let's get these tightened down. All right, guys, so I actually had to grab me an adjustable so I can throw this guy over here and hold this in place while I'm wrenching on the other side um, because it's uh, very difficult to hold this with my hands considering this is a uh, a lock nut so it's got that little seal in there that makes it uh, difficult to come off but it also makes it difficult to put on so yeah here we go now that those are all snugged up these are not they're still loose um but i'm gonna get the max tracks on there we'll get them fitted and set just how i want it on the rack um, and then we can tighten down the back so let's do it that's pretty good i have it effectively lined up with both edges of the uh the bed rack there and honestly I think that's a pretty good uh, position. So I'm gonna crawl into the bed and then tighten these up from the back. Okay, so these guys are gonna be a 14 millimeter um, rolling in here. So I'm gonna get them tightened down. All right, so they're all good and tight from the back there. And the, uh, the mounts themselves are very well secured. These aren't going anywhere. In order to lock these mounts in place, there's uh, these kind of like pop thingamajigs, right? So they extend. Um, and then you can actually run a lock through here if you so choose. Um, and there's two different layers, obviously. So if you have two boards, you uh, move the, the lower one. It's kind of hard to do with one hand because it's really tight. But you can loosen with this screw up top. You might have to a little bit. But um, yeah, this, this lower one is for two, and then the upper one is for four. So if you have four max tracks on here, um, you'll be able to still have them all locked and nice and safe. So. All right, and just like that, there you go. They are sturdy, rock solid. And you can see I'm shaking the truck with this. So uh, yeah, those aren't going anywhere. And uh, I'll probably go buy me like a little tiny lock that I can throw on one of these um, just to make sure that they don't get stolen. Uh, not that I would expect anyone to, but uh, you know, they're expensive and uh, you want them to be around for a while. Um, but yeah, there you have it. There is the Max Tracks along with the Max Tracks mount to uh, my bed rack. All right, so with the Rotopack, we're given the, uh, this part, right, um, as well as this little mounting plate, your keys, and then some supporting hardware, actually, have these as well. This is my Rotopack mount. It is some universal thingamajig that I bought from Moto, Moto something. Um, but it is a rotopack plate. It's meant for the 10 gallon, the big one. Um, and I only have the, the three gallon or 
whatever the heck, the small one, right? However, the small ones you can actually link together um, side by side, and then they create the length of a big one. Um, so I thought I would get this plate since that mount didn't work for me uh, with my RCI bed rack. Uh, so I figured I'd get this plate, I'd give it a shot, and I'll see what happens. So let's get this guy opened up and we'll see what we're looking at. Uh, <clears throat> well, my dudes, the RCI bed rack is non-conducive to uh, Rotopack mounts. So I ended up just using the uh, parts, I'll show you on the other side, but the parts that I had for the um, larger Rotopack mount. So I had just the screw along with this metal thingamajig along with the... Uh, square nut behind it um, and I was using this so that the square nut would stay in place um, but I'm kind of out of options on being able to mount this thing so uh, I'm gonna have to stick with this for now like it's solid it'll work it's just so many cars it's just not what I want um, you know so I'm just gonna stick with the small one for now and I'm gonna have to finagle something in the future because uh, the RCI bed rack does not like Rotopack that is that is for sure so just to show off, right, so I got the mount right there. We got the rotor pack. We're going to get this guy set up against it. And then this, I'm twist, untwisting it there, so right, super loose, right? So you just, this is like the macro twist. So you go until it's just, just barely um, able to clear this little ridge right here. You probably see it better on the other side. This little ridge right here on the plastic. Um, and then usually it'll be unlocked, but we got our key. Turn and pull out the core. You want it to be like that. So just enough to where this uh, is is just barely clearing the plastic. And then you use the micro twist to pull it down nice and tight against the bed. And then whenever it's tight enough for you, that's it. Slap the key back in, push, and then drop the key. And there it is. There's our mounted Roto pack. So if I have a bike up here, it's no big deal because the fork will be coming straight up and the back tire, it'll be out of the way. If y'all can't tell by my strategic placement on my box here and uh, the exact sizing, this is a new tailgate cover. So we got ourselves here, the all pro off road tailgate cover. Oh from uh, Tacoma Beast. Well, at least that's who I bought it from. But uh, yeah, this thing is insane. It's super cool. Finally adds functionality to the uh, existing tailgate right here, this weird rigid thing that T Tacoma or Toyota decided to do. And this actually gives me two cutting board surfaces um, and a couple little slots that you can stick things and a little cup holder up in the corner. And this is sick because when I go out camping, I've got a cooking surface. Check this out, my guys. Gorgeous. <laughs> nice. So I don't know what material this is made out of specifically, but it is some form of a plastic, um, and it looks like it's molded. I don't really know. I assume this is the whatever uh, nozzle head they use to uh, print this stuff. Probably injection molded if I had to guess. But man, look at that logo superimposed in there. This thing looks beautiful. I like it a lot. So the first first and really only step is we're going to take off all 16 of these bolts. And these are using a T10, sorry, a T30 Torx bit uh, to remove for both the smaller and the bigger head ones. So let me do that. So now that we have all those screws out, we can finally get rid of this disgusting piece of garbage. Garbage, I tell you. Yeah, throw that over there. And the new one, I know you're real close to it right now. It's just because I'm working with one hand right now. Slippity doos right into place. That's right, it is. Damn, son. Oh my god, that looks so good. Check that out. It looks so good. The next step is literally just doing the reverse of what we just did painstakingly because I didn't use my power drill. 
Uh, mainly because I'm lazy and I don't want to go upstairs to get it. So I'm doing it all by hand using that. And just like that, bros, it is entirely installed. 16 screws and about 20 minutes of work and you are good to go with a brand new beautiful tailgate looks so great so yeah that's the that's the all pro off-road uh tailgate overlanding tailgate really that's what it is um i bought this one specifically because it had a couple of cup holders on one side it had the individual cutting boards kind of segmented it just added a little bit more of a flare style to it um, they do make multiple different versions and there's other companies that make the same thing um, a lot of them are you know just solid plastic you know there's no cuts or anything like that in it um, other ones have different designs or they move the cutting boards to different places or whatever I just like the look of this one um, and I'm not too picky so I was like you know what I'm gonna just send it with this one but uh, it's relatively inexpensive like everything that you buy is, is obviously gonna have some some price to it if it's quality but uh, relatively inexpensive uh, and it's super easy to install so i hope you guys have enjoyed and i uh, hope you're going to get one and get out on the trail and uh, get some use out of it so i'm definitely looking forward to doing that and i most definitely will be so i'll catch you guys on the next one midnight sign out